Hi Dan here, hope you're doing well. This is a lesson from my new rock bass book. I'm gonna take a riff from it, I'm gonna teach you exactly, break it down, and then show you how to make your own riffs up. So this, is, it just couldn't be simpler, it goes like this. This is a riff based around A minor pentatonic. We're just using four notes here, A, G, D, and C, and there are only quarter notes or eighth notes, I and mean, it couldn't really be simpler. So we're starting on the fifth fret of the E string. I'm playing everything fretted. I prefer the control I get with that, but if you want to play open strings, please do. So we've got A to G. There are a few notes that are off the beat. Now what this is, it's just a rock riff. A riff is just a repeating pattern, and this particular one is four bars long. And it's based around Mike Kerr, brilliant bass player from Royal Blood. I'll talk to you about the tone at the end of the video. So A, G, D, C. Sort of holding my fingers over the strings to mute the notes. I want the first two quarters very short. I'm also fretting anything on the third fret with my first finger, and I'm using little finger for the fifth fret notes. There's a few things going on on off beats, so I'm very much tapping my foot to, so that I know that whenever the beats occur, that's where the foot hits the floor. I can just match that to these notes. And then off beats are just, when your foot comes up like one and two and three and four, and those ands are the off beats. And you've got to be very secure as to where those are. This applies to any style of music. So always be tapping your foot or nodding your head. It's a bit faster than I was playing it before. I'll do it up to speed. Now, that last bar, there's a rest. You don't play anything in that. And that actually is one of the most important parts of the riff. If you listen to Mike Kerr's bass lines, he's a master at using space. It's really quite remarkable. Now let's talk about how you might formulate and make a riff. So I've taken four bars here. The minor pentatonic scale is a rock staple. I talk about this a lot in the book. This is a minor pentatonic. It just contains five notes, A, C, D, E, and G, that's it. So what I did was I took four of those notes that just happened to be there. I've got a tempo in mind. I, I know that I want the riff, so it's like. The first two bars are, are this. And then the third bar sort of mirrors the first bar except we just have that big long gap. And I wanted to use space, I wanted just to use very simple notes and very simple rhythms. So this is something you could do. I'll make one up right away, straight away right now. So I'm just gonna use the, those notes that are in that shape. I don't know. Tapping my foot at that speed, I'm just selecting some of the notes. I'm sticking to the same kinds of rhythms as the notated example. Quarter notes and eighth notes. And this is how you can create your own riffs. You can do a two bar one. I went back to the previous notes. I've got, that's one bar. That's the second bar. This is what I would encourage you to do. Find some notes that work, and, and the minor pentatonic always works. Select a few notes from that, and then it's all about rhythm. It's all about taking some of those notes and just creating. It's also up to you to listen to as many different rock bass lines as you can, and, and get under the bonnet a little bit like this. Figure it out, work out why it sounds good. It's usually the same things, rhythm, tone, a bit of technique, note selection. With rock, it's a lot about the attitude and the aggression you put into it, and the tone, which we'll get onto in a minute. In the intro, I was doing some fills. So let's explore that now. There's a big empty bar at the end, so. Mm -hmm. 
So that little fill I did, it's a bit of a staple. I guess it, I guess I must've got that from from give it away. But you've got A starting on the 12th fret of the, of the A string. And just as I played A minor pentatonic starting on the fifth fret of the E string like this, that exact same pattern can be transferred to the 12th fret. And then the little fragment of notes here, the, the four notes here, all I did was I just slid into the 14th fret of the D string. And any combination of notes will work. Something like that. Using exactly the same notes within the riff, namely C and D. And if you grab the D with fingers two and three, even put your thumb over the top and just push it down, you'll be bending it to an E flat, which emphasizes the blues scale. That's another very, very common rock thing. So you just have to know these notes. Pretty simple. Add in that note there, the E flat. Then it's a case of aggression. Lots of articulations, hammer-ons, pull-offs, things like that. That will make your, your riff making and your fill sound really, really amazing. Let's talk about tone. So I've got this 1982 Ibanez Roadster. I've got some Dimasio DP126 pickups in here. It's just a, um, a P and a J, and I usually have it bang on in the middle. But it's got this sort of bright, uh, vibrant, sort of aggressive character to it automatically. I've got stainless steel elite strings on these. These are stadiums. I should be changing them actually soon. But the whole bass before we get to any effects is quite bright. It's quite lively. So I'm reaching for this rather than maybe um, my 60, what is it? 68 P bass that's got flat bounds on it. That's a bit of a darker tone. I want bright to start with. Okay. Then I'm going into a origin effects compressor into an octave pedal which is the EBS one, I've used that for years. And then just very quickly, I got up a, a, a distorted kind of sound on my Line 6 M5. But the main trick when I record, and especially when I do rock stuff, is I use a parallel situation, parallel signal. So I have a, a clean signal going into my Avalon U5, and that just keeps all the low end. And then I just blend in the, the distorted sounds. That's quite a common technique. Live, I would just maybe make sure that I don't use, lose any of the low end. Maybe I'd use an EQ pedal, maybe I'd use a pedal with a blend. But in terms of tone, yeah, all that sort of gnarly distortion is very important. So there are 105 rock bass lines in my book. They're all in the style of. So you've got players like John Entwistle, then you go all the way up to Billy Gould, Mike Kerr, loads of different styles of rock music. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link below and you can learn a lot more about it. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching. If you do have any questions whatsoever, let me know. The next few lessons I'm gonna be doing in conjunction with the release of my book are all gonna be about rock bass, rock bass tone, how to create your own riffs, techniques, all things like that. So do subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that and I'll see you on the next video.